some distance between us. I got some dragon breath, amen. <laughs> uh, so I get rid of some of the butterflies. Thank God for the opportunity to preach. I appreciate the message, Brother Lester. Amen. If not one of the best, probably the best message I ever heard you preach, and I bless amen. the Lord for it. I appreciate appreciate the Lord. Turn your Bibles to Exodus 20. Exodus 20, chapter, excuse me, Exodus 20, verse 1. Exodus 20 and verse 1. The Bible said, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Verse 7, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for... The Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do, thy, do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Verse 12, honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the, upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us. And we will hear, but let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you, that, and that this his fear may be before your faces, that you sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. A little while to preach on this thought from verse 12. And the Bible said, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. I'm going to preach on this thought. Honor thy father and mother. And I want to say, I want to dedicate this message to Brad Ogle. Number one, just simply because I know he's listening. Number two, because I love him. And number three, because I know God loves him. Man, everybody want to understand all that? Uh, there's a, a false, a false pretense that that uh, he might think I'm even going to blow him out. I don't have no reason to blow him out. I don't know anything evil about him. All I know is that there's a rocky relationship between him and his folks, and I, I dedicate this message to him. It's the birthplace of this message, and I want to preach to you, but I'm dedicating to him. And let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I bow before you, and I thank you, God, for your goodness and your mercy. And Father, I thank you for speaking to my heart. I thank you, Father, the verse that you laid upon my heart. And Father, I'm thankful, God, that you're real. I'm thankful, God, that there was a day that I can look back and remember how you convicted me of my sin, how you showed me I was lost, 
Now you passed by my way, and Lord, allow me to be saved by the marvelous grace of God. How wonderful it is to truly know you. Thank you, God, for the songs that's been sung, the message that's been preached already. Thank you for the good word of God. You said, for the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to dividing asunder of soul and of spirit, the joints and marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. Father, I thank you for the word of God. Thank you, Lord, for the songs, the songs of Calvary already tonight. Thank you, Lord, that thought in the song that there's peace, Lord, even when it doesn't even make sense. God, there's peace. I'm thankful, Lord, I have that peace because I've been to Calvary. God, there'd be one here tonight that's had never been to Calvary. There'd be one here tonight that's never been saved by the marvelous grace of God. Father, I pray, Lord, you move upon their heart even now. Father, I pray, God, you'd open their eyes to the knowledge of the truth. God, I pray, God, you would disturb them in their soul. Uh, Lord, till they get it right, till they confess their sin, uh, until they call upon your name. Father, you said, for whosoever uh, shall call upon the name of the Lord uh, shall be saved. You said, for if thou shalt uh, confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus uh, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Uh, thank you for the promise of the word of God. Uh, I thank you for an eternal salvation. Uh, I thank you for the good gift of God. Help us tonight, we pray. I pray for these young people. God, they sit up. Uh, Lord, they quit talking, they quit passing notes, uh, and they quit drawing pictures, God, and they listen uh, uh, to the Word of God. Uh, I pray, God, they realize and recognize the Word of God uh, uh, that's going to help them. Lord, I praise you and I bless you. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. I read all the way through verse, uh, uh, verse 21 because I want you to realize and recognize uh, after verse 18, the Bible said, And all the people saw the thunderings uh, and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they were moved and stood afar off. They backed away like a uh, little scared sheep. I mean, it was the voice of God. It was God uh, uh, speaking. If you look back in verse 1, you recognize, And God uh, uh, spake all these words, uh, saying, I am the Lord. And he went on to command them uh, uh, these great Ten Commandments, amen, that's been... Uh, uh, forgotten and taken down, amen, pushed aside, uh, amen, we look back and see this, uh, this letter of the law, amen, the word of God, uh, he gave them, and they, they, uh, they were skittish, they backed away the voice of God uh, at the thunderings and the lightnings, the smoke uh, uh, from the mountain, they removed and stood afar off, uh, and they said unto Moses, speak thou with us, uh, and we will hear, but let not God speak with us lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, uh, that ye sin not. Amen. I'd like to speak that. Uh, amen. To the young people tonight, as, this, as I preach about uh, this thought of honoring your father and your mother. Amen. All the verses and all the, all the law that he gave them this day, probably verse 12 was, uh, uh, was the least thought. Amen. To these that ran and hid, uh, uh, verse 12 was probably the least upon their mind. Uh, uh, they probably thought more about the smoke and the, and the strong voice of God and the lightning and thunder. Amen. But to honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long uh, upon the land which the Lord uh, thy God giveth thee. We'll look at it a little later on. Amen. But God said uh, it's the first commandment uh, with promise. Amen. They thought probably not much uh, about verse 12, about this thought. Amen. Uh, Amen. I hope you young people listen to me. Give me a few, uh, a few moments, a few minutes of attention. Amen. Uh, and think about, amen, uh, how God has commanded you uh, to honor your father and your mother. Amen. And that God has commanded you here not only in this verse, but many verses uh, uh, throughout the word of God. Uh, uh, why? You say, why should I honor uh, my father and my mother? First of all, look at this tall. Uh, amen. Because God... Uh, has commanded it, amen, because God uh, has commanded I didn't come up with this tonight, uh, amen, the man of God, uh, I didn't come up with this, uh, uh, some uh, ruly father or mother, amen, didn't come up with this, uh, uh, but God has commanded, first of all, uh, why, because God uh, has commanded, what did the verse say, uh, verse 12 said, honor uh, thy father and thy mother, uh, that thy days may be long uh, upon the earth, uh, uh, which uh, upon the land which the Lord God giveth thee. Uh, 
Amen. So God uh, uh, commanded it here in verse 12. Look at Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, I'm going to hold my place uh, and come back with Ephesians uh, uh, chapter 6. Uh, please turn over there and look at uh, uh, what the Bible says. The Bible says in verse 1, uh, uh, Children, obey your parents uh, in the Lord, for uh, this is right. Uh, honor thy father and mother, uh, which is the first commandment with promise. Uh, now that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long on the earth. Amen. If you want to uh, live long, if you want to have a good long life, uh, amen. He said that it may be well with thee. Uh, so not only have a long life, but have uh, a good life. Amen. You ought to listen up. Uh, you ought to realize and recognize from the word of God uh, uh, that you must needs honor uh, your father and your mother. Hey, very first of all, uh, we notice because God had commanded it. I mean, He proclaimed it uh, to be right. Uh, children, obey your parents in the Lord, uh, uh, for this is right. I mean, it be right. Uh, uh, no matter how long the day is, uh, uh, no matter how long the night is, uh, uh, no matter how many licks they gave you, uh, uh, no matter how many uh, words they had to sit you down and speak to you, uh, it'll be right to honor your mother and your father. I tell you, obey your parents uh, in the Lord. Notice first off that he proclaimed it. God uh, uh, proclaimed it to be right. Uh, uh, children, obey your parents in the Lord, uh, uh, for this is right. Uh, uh, no way, no how, uh, nowhere will it ever be wrong uh, uh, to obey your parents in the Lord, uh, for this is right. Not only he proclaimed it to be right, amen, he, he God, promised life. Uh, he said, honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, uh, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long on the earth. I mean, you can go search, uh, uh, maybe even this graveyard, just a few feet away, uh, and find some young person your age or younger, amen, who knows uh, uh, why they're in the grave, but somebody out there is probably there, amen, because they did not honor uh, their father nor their mother, amen, and God judged them, uh, uh, God brought forth uh, uh, the word of God, and only he proclaimed it to be right, he promised life, uh, he prepared judgment, look back over uh, there in Exodus, uh, Right over in the next chapter in verse 21, the Bible said, uh, And he that curseth his father or his mother uh, shall surely be put uh, to death. Now they weren't taking up stones uh, and killing children because uh, it was some neat sport there amongst the children of Israel. Uh, they only did it, amen, at times uh, uh, when the judgment of God fell and when there was some person uh, that did not honor their father nor mother. I mean, God uh, uh, brings it to pass uh, over and over again. You look at others uh, other than Korah, even people younger than Korah, people uh, that went against the Lord, against his word, uh, and refused and rebelled and rejected uh, the word of God uh, and decided not to honor their father nor their mother. First of all, because God hath commanded it I mean, he proclaimed it to be right. I mean, he promised life, and he prepared a judgment for, for those that would rebel against the word of God. I mean, only because God hath commanded it, but because your parents hath honored you. I mean, think back, think back uh, in your life, and think about how, I mean, because God hath blessed them uh, with a young boy or a young girl, because God has blessed them with a child, uh, amen, they've provoked him not to wrath. Uh, had they brought you up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, uh, amen, they've trained you up in the way that you should go, uh, amen, and God uh, had blessed them uh, uh, with children, the heritage of the Lord, uh, amen, they have honored you, uh, amen, number one, they have uh, provided for you, amen, uh, uh, since the day, uh, and that I brought them home, all seven of my children, uh, uh, since the day that I brought them home from the hospital, amen, I have provided for them. Uh, I've labored, I've worked, I've sweated, uh, and I've provided for them. They've never uh, slept under a bridge. Uh, they've never went without food. Uh, 
Uh, they've never went without drink. Uh, and they've had many blessings upon blessings uh, above the necessities of this life. Uh, uh, so I know none of my children uh, have any reason not to honor uh, their father nor their mother. Uh, simply because, uh, uh, first off, I've provided for you. Uh, and you can sit here and nod your head or shake your head. Uh, or greet them if you want, uh, amen, but you'd have to admit uh, uh, your parents have provided for you. Uh, I dare one of you children, any one of you, uh, from the oldest in here, Faith, who's she's the oldest, uh, uh, maybe 19 or maybe even Emily, even older, uh, stand up and testify how that you uh, have provided just one week every need, uh, every necessity for your parents, uh, how you paid the light bill, how you put the food on the table, amen, how you went to work and labored, uh, how you prayed for them, hey, how, how you took care of them, uh, and provided every need, every necessity. Would any child stand up and dare say, uh, I provided for my children? No, that's not the way God's got it planned. That ain't the way God's laid it out. Amen. There's a reason that you should honor your father and your mother, first off, because, because your parents honored you. They provided for you. Amen. They've prayed for you. I mean, pray for you that you'd be saved by the grace of God. Uh, pray for you that you'd never have to, amen, uh, endure and know the sin that maybe they knew in this wicked, ungodly world. Uh, amen. Before the days that I think back in the days uh, of sin in my life before I knew God, uh, before I recognized and realized uh, how that Christ died for me, the days uh, in, a drunk, uh, in a drunkenness and the days in drugs and alcohol, uh, and the days that I walked away uh, and not know uh, uh, where I was and where I was going and where I came from. Uh, and the days I should have died without God. Uh, and the days I could have died in my sin uh, and never met God. I remember, I remember getting the news that day of a, as a 10-year-old boy. Uh, my father went to meet God. Uh, he died in his sin. He died uh, with alcohol on his breath. Uh, and he lifted his eyes in hell. Uh, just like the rich man in Luke 16. Uh, and I think back in my life, uh, all the times, uh, like the song Amazing Grace says, uh, how uh, so many times I could have died in my sin. Uh, how many times I could have lifted my eyes in hell. Uh, how many times God uh, uh, could have judged me. I mean, I'd have died uh, and went to hell, never known uh, of the grace of God, never had the opportunity uh, to bring up my children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Uh, never had the opportunity, amen, to preach to my children. Never had the opportunity, amen, to give my children the word of God. Uh, amen, you ought to be thankful, amen, that your family, your parents, your mom, your dad, uh, not only provided for you, but has prayed for you. Uh, I pray for your soul, uh, amen, brought you to the house of God, uh, uh, fed you the word of God uh, over and over and over again. Uh, Amen. You ought to thank God for it. Uh, amen. Honor the and only provided for you, prayed for you, uh, protected you. Amen. Kept you out of harm's way uh, so many times, uh, so many ways you'll never understand, never comprehend. Uh, amen. Places they tell you not to go, places they, people that tell you not to hang out with, it's for your protection. Uh, amen. It's for your protection. Uh, it's for your protection. Would you think about all the days, uh, all the days, amen, that they have I prayed for you all the days uh, how they put a wall of provision and protection uh, about you all the days uh, amen that they have provided for you uh, how the days they went beside your bed uh, amen when you maybe you had a broke leg or a broke arm uh, or even a brain tumor or whatever amen your situation might have been uh, how the days that they sought uh, how the face of God and prayed for you uh, amen uh, you should honor your father and your mother, no matter how uh, rocky your relationship is. Uh, no matter even if, you're, if your mother or father's lost, uh, uh, no matter where they're at tonight, or even if you even know uh, or where they're at, you can still honor them. Uh, I mean, I honor my mother. I mean, the woman that brought me into this world, uh, how the woman that clothed me, uh, how the woman that cooked for me and took care of me, uh, how when my dad was off drinking, uh, how when my dad, I saw him time and time again beat her, amen, beat her and about kill her so many times, uh, amen, she took care of me, amen, she doesn't know God tonight, uh, she died tonight, I believe she lifted her eyes in hell, but I honor her, amen, I love her, so many things I don't understand about her, amen, what she's holding on to, why? 
She's rejected God so many days. Amen. But I honor her. I hope you honor your family. I hope you honor your mother and your father. The first commandment was promised according to the word of God. Because your parents, number one, because, because God commanded it, because, number two, because your parents have honored you. Amen. Number three, simply by honoring your parents, man, you honor God. Look at Matthew 15. Honor your parents, you honor God. Matthew 15, verse 1. The Bible said, Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? What a question to ask God, isn't it? What a question to throw in the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they washed not their hands when they eat bread. Now, understand, they weren't, his disciples, first off, wasn't eating their bread with manure on their hands or, or who knows, uh, motor oil on their hands, uh, amen, or camel dung on their hands, uh, amen. They were simply eating without partaking in uh, this tradition of walking over this, uh, this segregated or separated bowl uh, and some uh, holy water and washing their hands uh, and partaking their food. Uh, this tradition that the Pharisees, the religious crowd, had set up. What a question, asked God. Why do thy disciples transgress, not transgress the law of God, not transgress your word, but why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he, the Lord, of God Almighty, in the flesh, amen, the sovereign Son of God, he said, he answered and said to them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Amen. I mean, that, uh, that's it. he just stuck it right in there real good. Uh, amen. And told them, Amen, the truth. Uh, gave them the word of God right in their face. Amen. Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother. And he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. I told you Jesus still thought it. Amen. The same way as it was wrote there in verse 17. Amen. Of Exodus 21. Uh, amen. A judgment of God. You don't honor your father or your mother. You curse uh, your father or your mother. Amen. Amen. God's going to judge you. Amen. Amen. The song says, uh, amen. Uh, Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world, like I heard a little four-year-old sing it one time, red, yellow, black, and white, they are precious in his sight. Amen. But also, no, he loves you, but he'll judge you. Amen. 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 Honor your father, your mother. Amen. Don't curse your father, your mother, or the judgment of God's coming your way. But ye say, in verse 5, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift. By, so, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. And Mark, I think it's Mark, let's just know that's Corbin they're talking about. There's other tradition that they've, uh, that they've indicted, set up, amen, of Corbin, uh, play, a way that they separated funds and said, whatever, whatever you're profited by me and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Jesus said baloney. That's what Corbin is. It's baloney. Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Back, hence, back to his question. When he countered to them and said, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Ye hypocrites, verse 7, ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, Why, or excuse me, verse 8, this people uh, draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. He called them hypocrites because they're religious. Uh, how they talk religion. They talked, uh, I mean, things that sounded right and sounded good. Uh, 
I mean, but it was against the commandment of God. No matter what uh, your tradition is or what your tradition does, uh, I mean, it depends what, upon what I mean, the Word of God has commanded. Amen. He said, but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandment of men. Let us look over there at Isaiah, or Isaiah. We were talking about verse, in chapter 29, 13. He said, Isaiah prophesied of you. Nobody can call a man a hypocrite like Jesus, honey. Right. Wow. The Son of God. Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29, verse 13, I believe. He said, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder for the, for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord and their works are in the dark and they say, who seeth us and who knoweth us? That's the hypocrites he's talking to there, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the religious folk, I mean, that talk, talk good things, act like even talking about Corbin taking care of their folk honoring their their parents it was just a way for them to dishonor a way for them to to get out of the responsibility of truly honoring their mother and their father and i remember the time i tried to honor my mother i didn't know god i was lost and wicked i remember the time me and my sister we was fighting we were only about 14 months apart we still are i mean 14 months apart <laughs> and uh we was fighting like cats and dogs Man, tearing the house up. And my mother, bless her heart, she went over there and cut the cord off of a little cheap, I mean, a $10 Walmart electric heater. And like, as it Jerry Tyrell said, commenced to whooping me. Uh, she told me to lay down, and I did. I obeyed her. I could have picked her up and threw her across the room. I could have, I could have took the cord away from her and whipped her. I was much larger than she was. I laid down across that bed. I took it like a man. And guess what? I never fought. As far as I remember, I never fought with my sister again. I had words with her. I taught her how to fight out in the yard. It's something that did that day, even though my mom was lost as I was. And then I honored her. I laid down. I took my whipping. I ask, I, you can go to any of my children, ask if anyone remembers trying to fight off a, a discipline, a whipping. I've had a few, but they were young before their, before their will was broke, before that pride in their heart was broken. God help you children if you try to fight your parents because they discipline you. God help you children try to you raise, your, raise your hand at your, at your parents. God help you children. If you dishonor your parents by mouthing off at them, they tell you to do something. Amen. You're guilty. I don't know why you ain't at the altar. I don't know why you ain't, why you ain't seeking God's face. Why you don't, why it's not serious to you. Right. Probably because you ain't read this book. Yeah. Probably because you ain't, you hadn't looked at those verses I just preached on. You, you hadn't taken serious that this is the word of God. Right. That heaven and earth shall pass away, but these words shall not pass away. Right. These words are forever settled in heaven. So you go on mocking your parents. You go on rebelling against your parents. You go on talking about them behind their back. You go on backbiting against them, rebelling against them. Maybe you're preaching your funeral for long. You never know. <laughs> Serious business. Serious with God is not real serious with young people. But God said, honor your father and your mother, that thy days may be long 
upon the earth. And then the thought on Hobo.